Hello everyone, I am Judith Peterson, Head of Marketing in the Americas for Intertrust Group. Today's panel, the first panel, is on diversity, equity, and inclusion in private investing. We're going to be talking about early adopters who have raised the bar, so I'm very pleased to welcome my fellow panelists. Um, I have Josette Thompson, who is Managing Director at ProSec Partners. She is also the lead in, in diversity and inclusion for the firm. I also have Sandra Powers Murphy, CEO and founder of Noble Arc Ventures. She is also the author of The Road to AUM, which is on its ninth edition. And to my right is Rebecca Chia, who is head of business development and investor relations for Atalaya Capital Management. So the first question I wanted to discuss with my panelists was, um, and I'll start with you, Josette. Um, let's talk about your your personal, I guess, definition of DEI and how that was shaped by your career and your current role. Sure, and uh, thank you so much for having me, Judith, and the InterTrust team. Um, so my definition of DEI definitely comes from my lived experience as, as a black woman, but also my professional experience. So for me, DEI, I always add a B at the end um, because I feel belonging is such an important part of DEI. Um, as I go through my day to day, so ProSec Partners, the firm I'm with, we work with many professional and financial services companies, some of the largest companies um, around the world. So I really get to peek in to what's happening um, within different organizations and how they handle DEI. And uh, diversity is fact, right? Like, period. <laughs> um, there's no, you know, it, the conversation of whether or not it's um, a business imperative feels like it's stale at this point. We know that it is. Um, equity, obviously incredibly important. Um, the policies and the protocols that you have in place to ensure that you're really um, addressing some systemic barriers that might be in place for your organization, et cetera. Um, e equity is important. And inclusion, yes, you want to be included, you want to feel like you um, belong, um, but again, underscoring the B in belonging for me in my career has been important. You can have um, a similar background in terms of academics, you could have a similar title to people, but if you don't have a connection with them where you really feel like you're part of the team, it doesn't work. And I've seen how that manifests itself within organizations when people don't feel like they belong. Um, so that's kind of my perspective on it. Whenever I talk about DEI, I, I incorporate the B in there as well and encourage companies to really look at how they're encouraging and um, cultivating that belonging. So Sandra, why don't you continue on on that? I know you have clients as well, so you're seeing a lot of these initiatives. Right, uh, we work with a mixed group of clients, but a lot of our clients are diversity-led, women-led, uh, and also often impact-oriented organizations. And um, what we have found is that when organizations are led by diversity, they tend to grow diversity more effectively. And so when I think about the definition, for me, the diversity and the, uh, ex the, e the equity pieces are really just metrics. But as Josette said brilliantly, uh, really the notion of belonging, the notion of community, the notion of welcoming different perspectives and really engaging and honoring what that means when people can bring together different perspectives because they're from different cultures and different backgrounds. Um, diversity actually has a very broad uh, definition and many different categories if you, if you look up the technical uh, version. But I think for all of us, what we want to see when we walk in any room is that we want to see that not everyone looks the same, that everyone looks and comes at it from a very different perspective, that, and, we, and we hear those voices in, in our work together. So Rebecca, I, you, you know, you of the three are really living it in your, in growing, helping to grow Adelia. Why don't you talk about some of your experiences? Yeah. Um, first of all, thank you. I think a lot of what you mentioned are the things that we talk about internally at Adelia, and I think a lot of it for us is, you know, DEI is a, a big concept and it encompasses many, many things. And so thinking about for Adelia what out of those things are most true and most important for us and how do we advance those things internally and externally. Um, I think for us, a lot of it has been like, what do we want to advance and why, right? And I think you guys both alluded to this, but I think it's the idea that 
best ideas come to the top when you have diverse voices. And so really embracing that and encouraging that and having that in any one conversation is so crucial. And as an investment firm, we think that's how those best ideas really come to the top, right? And then I think secondly, you want a firm where people have that belonging and they feel you know, that they can have those conversations and there's that environment where all these diverse thoughts are welcome and encouraged. And so for us, it's really tying back to those two tenants and thinking about what we can do to promote those things. So take, taking it to the next level, how does each of you see the definition and the, the kind of these initiatives, how do you see it evolving? Um, I'll let you kind of continue on, Rebecca. Yeah, you know, I think the biggest thing I've noticed, you know, over my career, not only at Adelaide, but in the industry is it's not just coffee talk today, right? I think we've all known for a very long time DEI is so important and it's something that has to move forward and has to progress forward. But today it's more than just, hey, let's have a conversation about it. It's like, let's drive this initiative and put tangible steps in and measure that success, right? And I think that's really been a huge thing that the entire industry is focused on. I think it's really made a big difference in just progressing all of us forward. Josette, I, I know that when we initially started talking about this topic, all of us, one of the things I thought that, I can't remember if you or Sandra said it, so I'll let you both respond, talking about moving it beyond HR and communications. Can you tell us a little bit about that and expand on that? I thought that was a great point. Sure, I think um, a lot of times when people think about DEI, they're thinking about the recruitment piece, which is incredibly important. You need that talent in the door, but it goes way beyond recruitment. The retention piece, go, again, tying back to belonging, you know, what are you doing about retaining the people? Like you can hire 10 black people tomorrow, but if you don't figure out how to cultivate that talent, you know, what's gonna happen then? So that's where I see um, kind of that things changing. Looking beyond the recruitment, a lot of companies want to tell their DEI story, but if you can't articulate why DEI is important to you as a company, you know, what your values are, then you shouldn't worry about putting out a press release on something. Like, let, let's hold on that. It's so important to be authentic, to be transparent, to be accountable, going back to metrics um, when we're talking about DEI. So, um, yeah, I really feel like uh, beyond the recruitment, how does DEI fit into your business strategy? And the, from there, the communications part will become a lot easier. What are, you, what are you seeing at clients, Sandra? So I think we had continued to see a lot of focus on hiring and then the policy statements. Um, but what has changed really dramatically for us, and I don't know if you're familiar with a book uh, by Meredith Jones called Women of the Street that talked about how women manage money differently. And one of our clients, it's a WeBank firm, um, is featured in that book. And they have a platform of diversity managers that they work with. And when this all started to come about in the marketplace, sort of the response we got was, here we go again, it's gonna just be talked about, nothing's gonna happen. But the real difference is that people are putting much more strategic, they're doing two things really different. One, they're putting strategic three to five year plans together and larger organizations are requiring that of the managers that they hire. They really want to see in writing what is your plan. Uh, the regulatory bodies have made those requirements as well. So you see it in the due diligence questionnaires. And then the other thing we see a lot is a lot more training around the language that we're using around how meetings are run, about how conversations are having, because it's not just about putting a bunch of people in a room and hoping that, you know, that sort of maximizes the opportunity. It's really about engaging how it is that we all communicate and thinking about that differently. So I would say both in the three, year, three to five year planning, more formalized, and also training and education around the language we use and, and how we communicate to try to make it truly inclusive. <coughs> What I appreciate about all your responses, I always like to say it's a verb, it's not a noun, mm -hmm. right? So uh, can you think of, I know you mentioned uh, uh, before, Sandra, um, some success stories that you've seen, and let's kind of tie in where um, some metrics and statistics are tracking, um, kind of going beyond and the success stories that are happening, the, the people that are raising the bar. So we're seeing a lot more in our space and endowments and foundations not just try to pick a single manager to put in the portfolio, but we're seeing them actually do funding change initiatives while they're picking a portfolio of managers. Um, they're not just putting money into strategies, but they're trying to help those organizations 
beef up their operations and their business to get to the next growth level. The value there is that they can continue to hire and they can continue to grow that diversity in their ranks. Um, we're also seeing that for the first time ever, uh, we would engage with diversity-led, women-led firms, and we would hope to be able to go and present and be considered for investment options. Um, but rarely was that manager selected. And now we are seeing that you really, for the first time, feel you have a chance. You feel like you have a real sense that there is a desire to engage, to benefit from that diversity. Um, and I think over time, we'll see the value of that. It will become self-fulfilling. Um, and so that's, that's exciting. Those are the main things we're seeing. Rebecca, what's happening at your firm and how you guys um, tracking some of your initiatives. Um, I, I love when you talk about the way you want people to feel at your firm, mm -hmm. um, but and, and that kind of having an impact. But how, how you, because um, stakeholder buy-in, you know, things can be mandated from the top, but I appreciate the way all three of you are talking about things really need to be kind of grassroots and very grounded in the vision and the culture. So what's... Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of components for us, right? Like we have investors to report to and they want to know from us that it is a real important conversation that we're having and that we're making progress on it. So, you know, we have to make sure that we're making those steps. But to your earlier point, it has to be authentic. It has to be something that we really believe in. Otherwise, it's just coming up with talking points and it's not going to be believable because it's not going to be real. And so making sure that, you know, we have true initiatives that our employees buy into and they believe in. And we have a DEI forum where we invite our employees to say, okay, well, what would you like to see, right? What's important to you guys? How can we make those initiatives happen? And we started taking baby steps. And so, you know, one thing that we started um, a while back was an affinity group for women. And, you know, making sure that the women of our firm feel supported, they feel like there's room for them to have that conversation and to continue to increase that across the firm to other types of affinity groups, right? So it really spans a variety of different things, but again, it's going back to taking those like baby steps forward. What about you, Josette? So I would say, um, particularly, I touch a lot of clients within the wealth space, and um, I'll say one in particular, um, is taking things into their own hands. When it comes to training, they've developed their own training because they felt like off-the-shelf training was not really cutting it for them and their culture. So they have a, what's called a day of understanding across all of their regions. So starting with Asia, going to Europe, uh, the States, and it, the entire day is around talking about topics around diversity, equity, and inclusion, and they walk away from that day with very tangible next steps of how are we bringing these concepts and ideas to life within the organization and how are we gonna drive things forward. So I think um, a, a lot of the clients that I, I, I work with that I'm seeing are trying to figure out the best way to incorporate DEI, again, in an authentic way within their organization that feels right for them and that connects back to their business goals. Um, to Re Rebecca's point, not making it just talking points on a paper, but how are the different um, strategies that we're implementing really going to drive move, move the needle forward? What are some of the goals and, and what's kind of a, a, something you'd love to see manifest in, in the kind of the next phase of DEI? I'm, I'm happy to go first. Um, we do a lot of screening of organizations and managers, and I find often the written words really don't match. You go to the website, you look at the management team, you look at the images used, you use, look at the language, and it's just not uh, following through. And I think that's what's exciting. We're starting to see enough uh, commitment to the plans, starting to move that needle, and the training that's going to cause people to say, maybe we shouldn't word that that way. Or maybe this isn't really the right image to attract the type of people. Uh, maybe we should look at our client base. Maybe it's not just about, maybe we should think about our vendor relationships. There's just so many different ways to think about how to make a more inclusive uh, organization and really to impact society in that way. So we'd like to see the visuals and the words match uh, the policies. Yeah, I would add, um I guess maybe more in, in terms of accountability. So um, metrics, again, how are you defining DEI? And then based on that, what are your goals and objectives and how are you measuring those? Um, because now to Sandra's earlier point, 
um, it's going to be mandated in, in a lot of instances and it's going to affect the bottom line. So um, really holding ourselves accountable. I think people are doing the work, which is great to see that there's been great progress over the past several years, but taking it up to the next level um, and holding ourselves accountable. So more in terms of uh, tracking and, and metrics. Yeah, I think metrics for us is really key mm -hmm. in figuring out what those are. You know, we are a smaller firm, we're sub 100 people, um, but there certainly are, you know, to be held accountable, we need to have metrics. And so I think figuring out what the right metrics are on a variety of different things and implementing those and looking back a year from now and saying, okay, I, I can see the, the, the things that we did over the past year and then continuing to improve on them. Well, ladies, thank you so much. I, um, I cannot tell you how thrilled I am. All of you f definitely fall into the category of trailblazer and legacy maker. And I am, I'm just so honored to have you here. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.